and you could just see the excitement and the joy on the children's faces because they were at school and they were happy to be here. This was a place that they looked forward to coming to every day. We, we look forward to having those days again. Amen. Yeah, man. I tell you, you walk these halls, man, it brings so many memories oh, I, back. I, I almost imagine. put you in tears. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. I imagine. Well, it's going to be a rejoicing day when you all are back and uh, Oh, yeah. Back, huh? Oh, yeah. To, to see their faces, man, because we got a lot of our people <laughs> back, right? Yes. And when they tell the stories about the experiences that they had oh. and, in Texas and wherever they were, and they're so glad to be back home with people who know them and who love them. Oh, it's a good feel. Growing up in the Ninth Ward, you know, we were poor, but we didn't know we were poor because everyone around us um, sort of shared whatever they had. It was very family oriented. There were a lot of family groups that lived on the same block in the same general uh, geographical area. And so if you knew one person, you knew their cousin and their aunt, and, and they all accepted you like family. Wherever I ended at dinner time, that's where I ate. <laughs> My grandmother had a third grade education, but my grandmother knew the importance of education to whereas, even though she was a person who worked as a domestic, she made sure that the people she worked for, when they were ready to get rid of their encyclopedias or whatever, they went to her grandchildren. As civil rights was coming about, there was more opportunity and people were actually taking advantage of the opportunities the opportunities for a better education, for free education, um, and, and higher education. Well, since then, there's been a, I guess, a, a level of disappointment or discouragement that has set in, and a certain amount of complacency, because um, it's just not that push anymore to, to become educated, and that's part of the reason why I came into teaching, is to try to re-energize, put a little bit more energy back into the system to say, this is important. Uh, it's, it's been devalued too much. Our school was a beacon of light, a beacon of hope for a community, the Lower Night War that had no, no bank, that had no major supermarket that had no shopping center. But what we did have were people who were connected through living there from generations through generations. A lot of the people are property owners and continue to be property owners. So some might say that this was a poor community because of this low socioeconomic value. And others would say this was a rich community because the people had a sense of belonging and being. Even before Katrina, there was four elementary schools, one high school, one middle school in the Lower Ninth Ward. Martin Luther King was the hub, the only public library. We had a number of different activities that went on from that school. And it was a school that was becoming a magnet. We had a capacity in the school to hold 600 students. Kids were just piling in. We had programs that went into the night so that, so that you can work a little longer and know your kid is here and your kid's got a meal and your kid's got some, you know, that was the thing that we did for that because we worked for that community. I think it's important that the school comes back because if the school comes back and people have somewhere to put their kids, they'll come back and reclaim their land. I, I think it's like pioneer spirit. We're going back down and we're, we'll be there and we'll be committed to the neighborhood, but it's still a matter of who knows. You gotta keep <laughs> your eyes open. <laughs> <laughs>